Hello, hello, welcome to this uh, very important breaking news about the mortgage rates, the Federal Reserve and everything else. And my name is Si Wing Yi from the Year Listen Network. And I welcome my special guest, Mr. Richard Advani from Supreme Lending. And he is, uh, if anyone else, uh, he is the most important person to talk about this because he is a uh, mortgage loan consultant and uh, that's his job actually to understand the uh, Federal Reserve and the mortgage uh, rates and what have you. So uh, great important important breaking news. Uh, we, we're here to, uh, Richard is here to clarify any misunderstanding uh, just to get the facts from the fiction and everything else. Uh, so uh, without further ado, thank you for your time. Richard, I know you're a very, very busy man. We could talk about your career in the future because you are a full, you are a professional race car driver. You run a very successful mortgage lending uh, practice, uh, one of the leading uh, loan officers in the country. And then uh, you also have a uh, double digit in rental properties uh, that you have in your portfolio. So thank you for your time. Now you're a very busy man. So let's get to the point, Richard. So uh, we've been hearing, uh, you know, the Federal, uh, the Federal Reserve has very, uh, have increased their, uh, their basis of what 0.75% and, uh, and all the you know, doom and gloom, all the people are freaking out out there. All oh, the mortgage rate is gonna go, uh, is going way up and beyond. So, so please clarify, it's just, let's have it and from your perspective, what is really going on out there? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And this is uh, you know, one of my favorite things to talk about just because you know, a lot of what I do with my clients is education and information. And it's amazing in the last 48 hours, not only the general masses, but also people that are, you know, kind of in the industry, established investors, people calling me in a frantic, uh, in a panic, because the Fed, of, of course, increased rates again by three quarters of a percent. And, you know, they want to race to lock in their loans and, and so forth. And, you know, I have to constantly explain to people that mortgage rates are more tied to the 10 year treasury bond versus the Fed rate. Um, and, you know, it's funny because in the last 48 hours, the 10 year treasury bond, which was already on a downwards trajectory over the last week and a half, has continued to further drop along with mortgage rates. Now, the 10 year treasury bond if you guys have um an iphone or or you know uh, any type of smartphone and you go to your stock section and type in tnx you'll pull up the graph of the 10-year treasury bond and what you'll notice is you know rates obviously spiked very dramatically this year the 10-year treasury bond started in the low one percent range and it went up as high as 3.4 to 3.5 in the last 90 days Along with that, obviously, interest rates doubled and more, you know, almost tripled. Now, with the reduction in that treasury bond, I think at the moment it's closing around 2.6. So almost down one percentage point from the high. And what we've seen is in the last week to week and a half with that drop in the treasury bond, interest rates have moved down almost half a percent for mortgage interest rates. Now, the question, of course, is, you know, is this going to be the new bottom? Um, is the 10-year treasury going to continue to drop? Is it going to move back up? Um, that is yet to be seen. Uh, I'm not saying the Fed rate is zero impact on mortgage rates. The Fed rate does affect everything on a broad level, um, but it doesn't have the direct correlation people think to, uh, you know, fixed mortgage rates. And, you know, we're in a sweet spot right now. Hopefully it lasts for a while, but to where, like I said, rates dropped quite a bit off their peaks. So it's, it's a very, very important time to get off the fence. If you're on the fence, whether it's purchasing or refining or you know buying a new investment property, because this window may be may be uh, short lived. So, so Richard, what is the uh, 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 what is the mortgage interest rate uh, with the Fannie Mae lending guidelines for? Uh, I'm going to ask you two questions for a primary home buyer and for a real estate investor uh, uh, at this time, right now, approximately. Yeah, absolutely. So with, with the reduction in rates right now, investor loans with 25% down have moved back to the, the mid fives, mid to high fives, I'd say closer to the mid 
Um, it is going to take a couple points uh, in either scenario, of course, to accomplish that. But those same rates were in the low to mid sixes, you know, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, for primary homes, those have actually moved down a little as well. So you can get into, you know, the high 4% range or low 5% range on a primary home, which, you know, look, it's it's up from the high twos that, that a lot of us got spoiled with. But if you look historically, um, that's not a bad rate. That's a pretty good rate. Um, you know, that's that's a sustainable rate. And um, it's it's the reduction in payments in that three quarters of a percent drop from the high they hit is substantial in terms of monthly payment. Right. So so what I hear you saying is that, yeah, everybody's freaking out out there. All the mass media, the negative headlines and the YouTube videos. They're really, I mean, uh, they, 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 they've been kind of scaring people. So uh, it's not as so you're saying it's not as bad as what the, the public has perceived it is to be uh, at this time, you think? Yeah, I definitely think it's not quite as bad. I'm not seeing it. You know, um, rents have gone up. They're continuing to go up. Uh, house prices are stable. Uh, yes, with the increase in rates, there's, there's less home buyers trying to buy a property but and you you listen to the media too like oh home buyer new application dropped well you got to keep in mind there's 30 people in line to buy every house now there's 10 people in line to buy every house so has it drop yeah the newspapers are right but is we're far 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 away from a point where uh the demand is going to be under the supply right now demand far exceed supply and that's going to continue for the long haul so you know are we going to get to a point where real estate starts to drop sharply no i mean it's simply kind of at a huge huge uh shortage uh in terms of homes that we're going to build in the next decade versus homes that need to be built right so my final question to you is I know no one have a crystal ball, even you in your mortgage loan industry, and, and you know this kind of information uh, better than most people. So uh, for the rest of this year, uh, given the inflation, what's going on, given uh, that the Fed uh, they try to stabilize inflation with uh, potentially raising the, the Fed rates a few more times this year. So for the rest of 2023, what is your kind of a crystal ball prediction in terms of a uh, mortgage interest rate uh and and even uh, into uh into the year 2023 next year uh, some 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 experts said oh you know the uh the mortgage mortgage interest rate should 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 be lower as long as the inflation is being stabilized gradually uh so so that will allow with a lower mortgage interest rate that will create more demand uh for, for uh, primary home buyers and for those investors to get better cash flow so so what is your unofficial crystal ball <laughs> to my long question. Yeah, so the question was, you know, kind of what I predict interest rates to do through the end of the year. And as Wing stated, I don't have a crystal ball. And, you know, interest rates are based on the treasury bond, which is based on so many factors, not only within the country, but also, you know, geopolitical as well and what's happening around the world. So it's a tough question to answer. Um, what I, I hope happens is, once again, the treasury bond went up as high as almost three and a half. It's down to 2.6 today. You know, if we settled in the 2.6 to 2.8 range, you know, kind of where it is now, uh, that would be amazing. I would think that, I would hope that our worst case scenario by the end of the year is to be um, up, you know, three eighths of a percent from where we are today to half a percent. And I think our best case scenario is maybe to settle where we are today, which, you know, for investors means, uh, you know, close to the mid 5% range with 25% down for rentals and for primary home buyers means, you know, high fours, um, give or take. Uh, so, you know, that's, that would be the perfect scenario. Um, I think even at our worst case scenario, though, it'd take us back to the highs we experienced 60 days ago when the treasury bond was higher. So yeah, fingers crossed um, that things stay relatively stable from here on out in terms of mortgage interest rates moving into uh, the third quarter and the end of the year.
Very, very good, Richard. Uh, I think uh, there's a reason for optimistic. Uh, there's no doom and gloom out there, or at least uh, we hope not. And so the sky is not falling. So everybody should chill out and uh, try to <laughs> try to you know do their best and live the live a less stressful uh, stressful life. Thank you so much, Richard Avani from Supreme Lending, and a very great timely breaking news information. Thank you for your time and. Uh, with that in mind, uh, thank you so much and uh, have a nice day everyone.